Hi folks, welcome back to the Snowflake Developers YouTube channel. My name is Caleb Bechtold and I'm a principal architect here at Snowflake uh, focused on all things AI, machine learning, and Snowpark. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Snowflake Notebooks to build end-to-end -end data engineering pipelines using SQL, Snowpark Python, and a whole bunch of other cool Snowflake features. Let's jump right in. All right, so the demo that I'm gonna walk through today is based on our data engineering pipelines with Snowpark Python Quick Start, which you can find and access at quickstarts.snowflake.com. If you've not seen quickstarts.snowflake.com, we've got a lot of great tutorials um, that walk through all kinds of cool, fun features and, and capabilities within the Snowflake platform. <clears throat> the one today uh, is, is a full end-to-end -end sort of typical data engineering pipeline where we go from raw data sitting in S3, ingested into a raw format, joined up with data from the Snowflake marketplace, creating harmonized views of that data and ultimately an end analytics tier that's got some useful insights for our business. I'm not gonna walk through all of the code in tremendous detail. Uh, my colleague, Jeremiah Hansen, did an awesome walkthrough of this quick start start to finish, which is linked in the description below. Uh, where you can get into a lot of great detail around the specifics. We're really going to focus today on kind of the different steps and how you do them in Snowflake Notebooks and how easy it is to intermix your Python code, your SQL code, uh, and, and kind of do this whole workflow. But we won't go into a ton of detail about the specifics, so make sure to check out his video, uh, which is linked below in the description, uh, for more detail kind of around the, the uh, inner workings of everything. Uh, he goes through how to do this from VS Code, uh, using all kinds of fun de developer tools like Snowflake Extension in VS Code, the Snow CLI, and all sorts of stuff. Um, so make sure to check that out um, if you've not seen it previously. Today we'll just walk through how to get started doing Snowflake notebooks. So I, uh, I'm already logged into my Snowflake account, uh, and I have the notebooks tab here under the project section of the menu. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is upload uh, my IPYMB file, uh, which is in the code repository for the quick start. It's got the full kind of uh, setup of everything. So go uh, to my uh, uploader here, select the data engineering pipelines with Snowpark Python, that IPYMB. I'm gonna click open. It's gonna ask me to choose a notebook location. Let's see, where do I wanna put this? We'll put it in just our uh, demo DB in the public schema, and I'm gonna select our HOL warehouse, see the name, it gets, gets pulled in directly from that file. I'm gonna go ahead and click create. That's gonna create my notebook and then take me to the IDE. When I get into the notebook here, you'll see I've got the title up on top, which I can change. I can change the warehouse that the notebook is using. Um, I've got my object explorer here on the left-hand side. Go ahead and minimize that just so we can see things a little better here. I've got my package picker if I need to add any specific Python packages or anything like that, as well as the other commands to start the kernel, uh, to run all my cells, uh, delete, export the notebooks, things like that. And then I have my cell map over here. So first cell here just shows some markdown uh, about the, the quick start itself. You can see the links to the, the quick starts page and the GitHub repo, and basically the steps that we'll go through in this notebook. So we've got loading raw data from our external sources into Snowflake, loading data from the marketplace, creating those harmonized views and tables, creating some streams for incremental uh, processing of our data, create some custom Python UDFs and stored procedures, and then uh, ultimately create a task to run all this stuff periodically. All right, so to get started, the first thing I'm gonna do is hit our start session button up here in the top left, or top right. Uh, and that's just going to um, connect to our warehouse, as you can see here, which is where our code that we we're gonna run as we go through this uh, uh, will actually execute. So our first cell here uses streamlit image uh, method here to pull in that image description of the full workflow so you can kind of see step by step what we outline above, how we'll do all that stuff uh, in our uh, in Snowflake notebook here. First SQL cell here is just some, some setup steps around uh, roles and privileges. It's written using SQL here, as you can see, embedded in our notebook. I already ran these, so I'm just going to skip ahead to the next one, uh, which is where we're going to actually create uh, our various schemas and then the external stage, which has that data loaded in S3. So you notice here I have a SQL cell, which I can run, kick this off. It's gonna just run a few of these SQL statements for me and it should return that this last SQL statement executed successfully. Yep, stage successfully created, cool. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually go into our Python code to take this raw data that we have in our S3 bucket uh, and ingest that into our Snowflake uh, account. And so you can see here, 
I have both in the same notebook my SQL cells, where I can run multiple lines of SQL, similar to how you would within a Snowflake SQL worksheet today. But then I can also go down here and I have some Python code, uh, where I've written some functions to load in my raw data using the Snowpark Python Data Frame API and ingest them into my tables in my account. Let's go ahead and run that to create those functions. Oops, there we go. And then I'm going to get my Snowpark session using the handy get active session function that we supply in the notebooks themselves. This allows me to then actually run Snowpark statements from my notebook. So you can see here, I have my session object. It's using my account, my role, the database, schema, everything that I'm currently in. Uh, and from there, I can run that load all raw tables function. This is going to kick off you can see here this function up above where we go through these different schemas uh, and actually ingest all these different uh, raw parquet files into our Snowflake tables. So we'll just let that run for a second because some of these years have you know millions and millions of records. Um, so this is going to kick off and then just ingest those into our account. All right. So once that load all raw tables cell finishes, we can run our validation function just to make sure that all the schemas look right, print them out. You can see here. We have the schemas for all our different tables that was inferred from those parquet files that we ingested from S3. Now you can also do things like add uh, weather data from the Snowflake marketplace if you wanted to, or just go on to now creating views on top of the underlying tables that we created previously. So you can see here, I've got another big Python cell with some functions where I'm taking some source tables and then ultimately joining those data sets together using different keys and selecting final functions out of them and then creating a view and a stream on top of that view using the Snowpark API's create or replace view. And then also doing some session.sql on this one part Python cell here. So you can run that and then create my actual view. There we go there. Then I can also create the stream and there we go. And I've got, again, a whole bunch of Python cells that I've authored here in my notebook and then executed directly from the warehouse too. Now, maybe I wanna also create uh, some functions um, that I'm gonna use in my subsequent steps. You can use the Snowpark APIs to create functions using you know, session.udf.register or the UDF decorator on a Python function, but you can also just use SQL to write the DDL basically for this function. So in this case, I just wanna create a function that does you know, some basic Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion where we take our Fahrenheit temperature and then do kind of the Celsius conversion formula here. And I can run that uh, SQL directly in my notebook as well. So take just a second and we'll see the function's been successfully created. And if I want to just test that it works, I can run another SQL statement where I just pass in an explicit, you know, 35 Fahrenheit and we should get back, yep, 1.666 um, Celsius as the output from our UDF. So again, going pretty seamlessly here between Python and SQL, depending on either what's, you know, what I prefer or maybe what a certain step is easier or makes more sense to be done in SQL or Python, whatever it might be. Now, I also want to create a stored procedure um, that's going to create some downstream harmonized tables based on that stream that I just created before and do some typical merge statements that you might do in a data engineering pipeline. So you can go ahead and run that here and then just call my main function, which is going to actually process uh, and merge those order updates. And this is my stored procedure essentially. Now, initially I'm just writing the Python functions here and then uh, you know, calling that function in a Python cell. So I didn't actually create my procedure yet, but now I could take that same script that I had before and again, use SQL DEL to run a create or replace procedure statement where you'll notice here, I pass in actually that script variable to my SQL cell. So from my Python cell directly into my SQL cell here, using this script and the, uh, the double brackets syntax. This will take just a minute to create. And what this is doing is, is just running this exact create or replace procedure statement, but it's actually inputting that Python syntax that I had above from my script variable into the SQL cell for ultimately the actual um, handler of my code. So there we go. My procedure was successfully created from my SQL statement there. I could then also run some SQL to actually call that procedure. And just like we did when we ran the main function itself up above from our Python statement, we'll see here that the SQL call against that stored procedure also we get this successfully processed orders uh, bit there.
And you can do the same thing, create some additional procedures, again, test them out, make sure they actually run. You can then do the same thing where I, again, take my Python script. Uh, and if I wanted to create this as a stored procedure, I could use the Snowpark APIs to do that, or just run our SQL create a replace procedure statement again, just like we did before. Cool. And you can kind of get the gist from there, right? So I'm intermixing um, uh, SQL and Python all in the notebook. If I wanted to then orchestrate this, I could use SQL to create tasks where we look at when our stream has data and call those corresponding procedures and then actually um, ingest some new data and then watch those different tasks kick off as we ingest you know, our 2022 data and things like that. Um, so pretty awesome. We get to do all this now from directly inside of a Snowflake notebook. Um, there's going to be all kinds of cool features that you'll see lots of demos on in our in our videos moving forward, where we look at how we can use things like Git integration to version control our notebook code, orchestration to to manually schedule notebooks to, or um, schedule notebooks to run on some sort of schedule. All kinds of awesome stuff uh, coming up. But hopefully, this gives you a sense of how we can use these notebooks to build out these data engineering pipelines. Thanks for following along. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can keep getting updates on all the new cool ways that you can use Snowflake notebooks. We'll see you next time.